And the word of the Lord tells us that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but there are these things that we call demons and, and, and evil spirits that that's what we're really targeting and spiritual wickedness in high places. And so the best way to fight your battles isn't a physical way, it isn't trying to tell off someone, but the best way to fight your battle is on your knees in prayer and in worship and in the word, amen? Do you believe that? Can anyone testify that that's the best way that, they, that they've conquered a few things by way of prayer going into your war room, so to speak, amen? Hallelujah. So this is how I find my battles. 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 Come on, say that. Say this is how I fight my battles. You know it. This is how I fight my battles. 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 It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. This is how I fight my battles. 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 So there are two short parts of that chorus. The first is this is how I fight my battles. And so for us, we have to understand how we fight. We fight through prayer and we fight through worship. Yes. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, uh, though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. On the contrary, the weapons we fight with, they have power, divine power to demolish strongholds. And then as Chakra said earlier, uh, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. So we have to understand how we fight. We have to understand where our power comes from. And I think one of the most awesome examples of that is in the Old Testament where Jehoshaphat, the king, he is up against a tough space. People are about to wipe out the nation. And he puts some singers, some worshipers in front of the army. You need the army, but not in this case. This wasn't a battle for the army. This was a battle for God. And so he set the singers, the worshipers, to go out in front of the army. And they sang and they worshiped and they praised God. And God came through and took care of the battle. When Joshua was going into Jericho, you know, when God gave him that most ridiculous strategy for conquering a city, made no sense but God. But it didn't make any sense. And so right as they got around that last day, the seventh time around that last seventh day. Then they made this joyful noise. And you might miss that if you just read it in the Bible. It seems like they were just making some noise. No, they were worshiping God. They made a joyful noise unto God. And that is when God took care of the battle. That's how we fight. That's how we fight. We fight on our knees. We fight in worship. And we have to let God do what God does. The other part of that song is, it may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. I, I can't tell you how that song has just been the epitome of my experience over the last 11 or so months. There were times where everything was there, it was closing in on me, and I'm just like, God, you have got to be kidding me. You are the strong God. I've gotten to know that about you. You love me. I've gotten that to know about you as well. But, like, this is your plan? Like, seriously, this is your plan? There would be times when I would be in my office and I, I just couldn't see anybody. I couldn't speak. I couldn't eat. Because stuff was just surrounding me and it, it was like it was closing in on me. And I was ready in some instances to like, you know what, God, this is enough. This is enough, God. Can't do it. Don't want to do it. I'm just being honest with you. But what God had to constantly encourage me with is, Joe, do you trust my heart? See, sometimes you and I, we want to figure out what God's doing, why he's doing it, 
and how he's doing it because we think he should do it a different way. And God's answer to that would be this, my ways aren't your ways, my thoughts aren't your thoughts. So even if you get bogged down with how I'm doing what I'm doing, never ever mistrust my heart for you. And, and he seared that into me and he spanked me over my head a few times. Joe, you won't get what I'm doing because you're not me. You can't see what I'm doing. I might share it with you from time to time, but you can't see what my thoughts are your thoughts. You wouldn't do things this way. I know that because you're not me. But whatever I choose and allow you to go through, don't you ever mistrust my heart for you. That's what hurts God. That's what hurts God. When circumstances are such that they are overwhelming for us, that doesn't surprise God. That's when he comes through with his grace. But it's when we're in those circumstances when we start to mistrust God's heart for us, that hurts daddy. And I didn't understand that so much like I understand it now. No, I'm not perfect. It might happen again. But I'm understanding it's not so much that God expects me to know how to get through everything because I'm just flesh. But what he challenging, challenges me with is don't mistrust my heart. Don't think that because this is what you're going through that I don't love you. So the idea comes from that scripture in the Old Testament where Elisha is in a certain area and the king of Aram, Assyria, is had it with Elisha. And he just wants to wipe him out. So he sends his whole army to go and find where Elisha is. And they find him. He's in Dotham. So they get there. And what they do, they didn't want to make any mistakes or take any chances. So they circled all around him. There was no way for him to get out. So they made sure there was not one gap. And so the morning came and Elisha is up and he's out. And his servant was with him. And his servant is looking around and is like, Elisha, like, it's all done. Like, we're done. What, 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 what can happen now? We're surrounded. There's nothing. There's no way out. There's no way out. And Elisha prays to God. And he says, God, open the eyes of my servant so that he can see how many are for us as opposed to how many are against us. And the reality was that even though, see, this is the thing that we sometimes miss. It wasn't that the army didn't really surround them. They did. That was real. But it wasn't the only reality that was taking place on that day. That was the issue. So the army was real. What the servant saw was real. Him freaking out was real. It sort of made sense. But the thing that he didn't take into consideration was the persons and the heavenly host, the chariots of fire that were for him. And so when we sing that song, we're going to sing it through a few times. I want us to understand this. I, there are times, and you know what? I was sort of just getting out of that space. God's teaching me. It's growing me. And, and then now it's just like I'm sort of back in that space. Or maybe I didn't leave it because now we're dealing with another difficult situation. But God's answer is the same. There are some things that surround you. Take note of them. But don't think that that's the only reality that's around you because I have all resources, I have all power, my heart is for you, you don't know what I'm doing, you might get frustrated, but don't you ever think that my heart has changed towards you. So that's my encouragement to all of us. God is in love with us as much as before or whatever date you want to think about it. His heart for you hasn't changed. His mandate for his church hasn't changed. Things were surrounding us. And I know you all felt it. We all felt it. But that was just one part of the reality. The more important, the more significant reality is that God is for us. And if God is for us, who can be against us? Who can be against us? So this is what I'm going to actually do. Come on, let's come down front one more time. And we're going to sing this through. And sometimes it's, it's kind of cool to sing through choruses. But you got to know the heart behind it. you got to know where it comes from Scripture. And that's what you and I have to realize. We're going to fight. This isn't the last fight we're going to have to fight. So we better learn to fight the right way now so that when we get into the next battle, 
we know we hit our knees and we worship our God and we give him space to do what he's going to do. And when life continues to surround you, God wants to encourage you and say, you know what? Yeah, it is what it is. But don't forget that I am surrounding the whole thing. I have you. I have this situation. I have it. So let's sing that through and let's worship God from that place to say, you know what, God? My faith is in you. I will fight the good fight. I will fight on my knees. I will worship you. And when life surrounds me and it seems like I have no way out, I'm going to ask you to open my spiritual eyes so that I can remember that you are for me. You're for me. You're for me. Your heart towards me hasn't changed. And you love me. One of the things that we're going to discuss and that we want to see is family. This church as a family. Like we're, you know, in family is what you do. You, you have um, your children have something happen and you celebrate as a family. Well, if your children have something happen, we want to stand them on the stage and celebrate them as a family. Um, and, and one of the reasons um, that God puts this on our heart is because as we read through the book of Acts, we realized that churches weren't made significant because of, um, like, here's what I started thinking. I know of a lot of pastors in the States, and I love their sermons, but I know nothing about their churches or what their churches do. But in the book of Acts, you know how churches, churches um, you know how their reputation spread around? By what their family did. It wasn't because they had this great leader, or, but people would say, nobody in this family has a need. Because if Cherie had a need, somebody in the family heard about it and took care of it. Whether it was spiritual, emotional, physical. And so what we want this church to be is a family where everybody finds their needs taken care of by somebody in the family. Because if we become that, we still go into the community. But if we become that, you know what happens? That reputation goes in the community. And in the book of Acts, it says, it, because that was happening, people were added to their numbers. So this is what we're looking to do. And then as I, you know, see what's going on now, I see the need for family even more. There's a family that is part of our family who needs us. They don't need us to come up with clever lines like, you know, God has a plan. They just need family. They just need you. They just need us to hold them and hug them and, and let them know that we love them. And so I am so looking forward to what God is going to do as we grow this family together. Let's pray. Father, one of the things about being a family is that when one member hurts, we all hurt. And right now, God, we acknowledge our hurt. And we acknowledge our pain. We even acknowledge, God, our doubt and our questions. But God, over all of those things, we lift you up above them. And we know that you can handle our hurt. You can handle our pain. You can handle our doubt. You can handle our questions. So with everyone, we will bring them to you. But Father, right now, there is a family that is a part of our family that needs us. But more importantly, God, they need you. Thank you, God, that this was a young lady who knew you as personal Savior. So right now, we understand that she has seen the face of Jesus. But God, that does not mean that there is not pain on earth. And Lord, today, as a family, we know that we fight a very real enemy. And God, we need each other, especially... Uh, at this time, how we see ourselves in the world, where we see, God, that darkness is rising. And Lord, we're asking you to, for, to cause us to become a radical family, to fight against the darkness, but to take care of each other in such a way that people hear and say, those people at Cornerstone love each other, that, that ah, Father, do what you can, only you can do in our hearts. Thank you, Lord. We love you. We, we hurt, but we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. This message has been brought to you by Cornerstone Bible Fellowship Bermuda. To connect with us, visit us at www.cornerstone.bm or if you have a prayer request, email us at prayer at cornerstone.bm.